Welcome to Experience Michigan, everybody. I am Rick Hummer, and you know what? This week's show, since we're all kind of stuck at home, not getting to go out and do the things that we normally do, uh, obviously, maybe you're out gardening, doing some things, but this entire show today is about sustainability. And Krista Bailey's been doing these segments with us now for quite some time, and we just hope that you find these rather enjoyable. So enjoy the show today, and, well, use the resources we've got. Hi, I'm Krista Bailey with the Center for a Sustainable Future at IU South Bend, here with a moment to experience sustainable Michiana. And that means it's a, something that's going on in our area that is a nice balanced approach to environmental concerns, social, and also economic. So today, we're at the very glamorous looking Lang Lab uh, in uh, South Bend on the southeast side of town. There is a lot going on here. You wouldn't know it from the outside. You might drive by it and not even think a thing because it, it's an old warehouse. Uh, but once we step in, you'll see that there's a world of activity happening to build a more sustainable Michiana. So let's take a look. So Rami, tell me, we were, we were just outside and no offense, but it, it doesn't look great out there. I mean, it's an older building, it's, it's brick. Um, I've had many people tell me they, they drive right by, they don't realize what it is. Sure. Why put this kind of space in this kind of space? That's a good question. <laughs> we, get, we, get, we get asked that a lot of times. We really were doing very much what we were doing at Lang Lab in our house, mm. uh, or, or rather houses, all the people in the community that was involved in Lang Lab. We'd have dinner parties, we'd have like rock shows in the basement, we'd have gatherings and whatnot. And then in 2007, 2008, the idea was, can we make this a state? Can we actually make this in a way that we, no one person is hosting the parties all the time? And maybe turn some little profit, something to keep it going, you know? Um, so a collective, collaborative party yeah, of sorts. Yeah. What all does happen here? I want to show people all the, the we, sustainable we, things we, here. We are happy to, to host and promote pretty much anything. So, so long as uh, uh, it is promotable, so long as it has sub su substance. Uh, if you look at it like our repertoire, we've had from uh, literally burlesque shows, the Brick House burlesque, mm -hmm. to church services, and everything in between, like literally opera, uh, uh, noise uh, uh, performances, uh, business seminars, weddings, uh, like literally, you name it. We've had we've had pretty much everything. So and so we're here, sort of in between spaces. Yeah. So there's like a, a larger event space, but then over here is a gallery, mm -hmm. and then some entrepreneurship sort of stuff happening yes. at, at either end. Yes. So um, can we take a quick Absolutely. look and and see Certainly. what there's to see? Happy awesome. to show you. Yeah. All right, hey Nathan. Hi. So we just came from the gallery, which was incredible. I haven't seen that show yet, so that was really neat. But I know there's a lot of stuff that's happened here. I mean, I've been to receptions and parties and performances, and I gave a talk here. Um, but I know that's just scratching the surface. So what other things happen in this multi-purpose space? Uh, we've had everything from opera to business conferences. Conferences, um, really? Uh, cool. I think our first, our first um, kind of use for the gallery space was uh, was a business conference with a uh, small business development corporation. Interesting. Um, so you can come here and be very serious and, and learning things. You yeah. can also come here and, I'm assuming, get kind of goofy and have fun. So this is a large chunk of the building here, um, mm. maybe the whole heart of Lang Lab, uh, at least that's how I sort of think of it, but it's a lot of space to give up, as it were, to the community to do whatever it wants. Mm. Why is that the kind of the heart here? I think that's where we are, at, I mean like what we try to do as a uh, as a space is to um, facilitate the community as much as possible. There's been very little we've rejected as far as um, you know people coming in um, and asking for space. Um, we all we'll always try something at least once, you know. Um, if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. But um, we're pretty open to just about anything happening here. So the heart is sort of that possibility of bringing community together. Possibility is the main goal, like what can we do with it? And then out of that springs community, I think. And when you say we, it's not just y'all who own it, but... It's, you know, there are people, this, there are people that are invested, the people who are, um, who have been here before, um, 
that have that invested their time and businesses into helping to create the space have those have moved out into the community that have been incubated here um, the businesses that are here now um, the artists that are here now have investment in the space and so um, we try to facilitate that and create um, a space for them as much as us. Hey, Hello. Stephanie. Hi. How are you guys? Good. Great. We are showing off some of the sustainable features here. But this space has evolved so much over the last 10 years. Um, I'm very familiar with many corners of this building, but um, could you tell me a little bit about the idea behind this business entrepreneurship model? Um, sure why here, how that works for, for Lang Lab and the businesses. I think when you look around in South Bend, there are so many different people who um, have the ability to serve the community with um, things like being creative with coffee, being creative with chocolate, being creative with bread, being you know, creative with pottery, all these other things that um, lend themselves to businesses. For me, there's not so much of a distinction between you know, having a concert and having a, you know, a renter or a business because they're all in here participating together as part of the community and they're all weaving together to create this fabric of um, people, individuals that um, support the process of making South Bend a better place to live. So, so in some ways you're creating sort of this trial size space for mm -hmm. businesses. Test it out, start to grow or not, although I think everything's been pretty successful that's come through. <laughs> Um, well, and get an establishment, <laughs> right, to, to yeah. see, well, is that really what I want to do? Is it going to work for the community? Um, and what a wonderful model to say, mm -hmm. pay rent when you can, how you can. <laughs> we want you to succeed because we know that makes Lang Lab better and right. makes the community better. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. So definitely we are able to stress test and we have had <laughs> some um, very, very big wins and some misses as well. Um, sure. And that's fine. I think that's part of um, a failure is also a lesson, right? And so uh, about what works in this community and what doesn't work in the community. and. Um, we're, we're an individual community. South Bend is its own city, its own community. We're not like anybody else. We don't have the same people. We don't have the same resources. Other cities have more. Other cities have less. But what we really have here is unique and special, and we should you know, see what works here and, and grow what works here and, and uh, what works best for us. So. Well, thank you all so much for investing in South Bend in this way, to invest in our local economy, to building up the environment, but of course the important piece is building that community that keeps it all together, our own unique community. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank yeah. you, thank Lang you. Lab, you. way to yep. experience sustainable Michiana. <laughs> Great. Yep, thank you. Hey, I'm at the livery in Benton Harbor, which is a great way to experience sustainable Michiana. Today, not going to the beer garden. We're gonna go inside and see what makes this place so special. Well, hey, Simon, how Hi. are you? Hi, I'm very good. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so interested to learn more about what sustainable stuff is happening here at the livery. Uh, the livery was started by uh, some very forward thinking people um, back in 2005. Um, and they had a vision for this area um, that it would be a center of arts and a, a kind of a, I mean, it, you know, the area has gone through ups and downs, obviously. I mean, Benton Harbor has experienced some very difficult financial times. Um, there's obviously been problems with race. Yep. Um, and it, it, uh, it was a challenging area, um, but I think that they had a vision that they could bring this area back to life. Uh, through art and community. And they had a vision of creating a space where um, they could have live music, um, and ultimately they settled on the idea of a brewery. Um, and they started the Livery Microbrewery um, back in 2005. So you guys are doing some really interesting things in, in terms of um, environmental issues, I guess. And aside from just reinvesting in the building and reinvesting in 
Ben Harbor. Sure. Uh, but you're doing some interesting stuff with your use of water because beer uses a lot of water. Beer um, does so use a lot of water. So if you want to experience sustainability and drink beer, uh, trying to find a happier way to do absolutely. that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, water use is, is, is very important um, uh, consideration for us, given, you know, wh where we're located at. I mean, we utilize water from the lake. That's what we use to brew our beer. Um, so we try to be very, very careful in terms of the amount of water that we're using for all of the different processes that we undergo. Um, those being, because um, the beer brewing process is a water intensive process. There's no way around that. But So how do you minimize that? Well, we reclaim a lot of water um, okay. that we use um, for different purposes. Um, and we reuse that water in different ways within the brewery. Of course, we're always using fresh water when we make beer, <laughs> okay, just to be good. sure <laughs> we're clear about that. But no, we do utilize, reuse a lot of water that we use for cleaning purposes um, and cooling purposes, and we try to utilize that water at least a couple of cycles um, for different activities that we're doing in the brewery. Because obviously there's rinsing, there's cleaning. Sure. Um, you know, we're using caustic chemical, chemicals and, and, and sanitization um, in order to make sure that we're making a, a very high quality product. That's important, obviously, to making beer. Um, but we do do our very best to reuse um, and recycle as much water as we possibly can. We do utilize a lot of locally grown ingredients. Our, our salads are all locally grown. Yep. Um, we, we, we utilize uh, a different company that provides locally produced meats and cheeses. Um, most, uh, really as much as we possibly can, we utilize locally grown and locally produced ingredients. I mean, our community outreach program is a, is a core value that we have. Um, you know, we think it's really, really important to engage in our community um, not not just sell them beer, but be a part of this community and and help the community move forward and grow. Um, you know, we like to think of ourselves as kind of the anchor of the arts district here in, in Benton Harbor, um, and I, I I think we live up to that um, in, in terms of you know we do live music almost every Friday and Saturday night, um, which features local artists but also nationally recognized artists as well. Um, so that's a big part of it. Um, you know, the community night have been incredibly successful. Um, we host a community night every Thursday night um, and nice. we donate a portion of our sales. It's 15% of our sales between 5 and 8 o'clock uh, to those local charities um, and uh, local it, it and the thing is is that we provide this space as a as a gathering place um, for those for those organizations and you know honestly the money in a way is kind of secondary to the to the ability to connect with people and to raise awareness about their organization and what they're doing for our community. So coming out, connecting with the community and giving back, not just to yourself and your own social needs, but actually giving back to the community is really great. Thank you so much yes. for doing that. So the other thing I wanted to, to let people know about in terms of experiencing sustainability, um, many of us have families, and if there's something going on here, concerts and so forth, right. um, you could be up here, but maybe not with your littles. Um, or maybe well, you just want a different scene. So I'm sure. wondering we, if we can show folks what you've got downstairs. We absolutely can, but I would say this, like all ages are always welcome in the entire area. Great. Um, and as long as, of course, they're accompanied by an adult okay. um, or a parent um, uh, or guardian. Good point, um, I make But sure. they are certainly <laughs> Welcome to to enjoy the music, um, enjoy the space, um, and uh, we, we certainly welcome uh, families regularly, um, as well as pets outside in the beer garden. So beautiful. Well, let's so yes, take let's a take look a look downstairs. So yes, we do utilize the lower area um, for a number of different reasons, but. If we have a concert up here that is a paid event, mm -hmm. um, we do offer the lower area so you can just come and have a pizza and a beer and, and hang out. Don't so you, have to see you don't the band, have to pay to see the band. But you always could see good You music. should, but you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> all of our to go serviceware is all biodegradable, compo compostable. We also compost all of our food waste and we recycle a tremendous amount of cardboard and obviously any other recyclable things that we might have. We, we make that a very, very high priority. 
So this is this fun space down here. Yes, exactly. It feels fun already. Yes. And it, <laughs> right. <laughs> They're having a fun time down here, obviously. Uh, we do have a foosball, a couple foosball tables down here. Um, it's a, you know, it's kind of a whole cozy feeling down here. So. It's fun. Yeah. So if you're not seeing the live music, you're still having a lot yeah, of fun down absolutely. here with games and conversation. So yes. thank you so much for showing me around and really for going above and beyond and well, doing the right thing by the community and this beautiful part of the world we live in. So. Well, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure to talk with you today. Thanks. I might have to try beer. Sounds good. <laughs> I am back at Lang Lab. This time we're taking a closer look at how Eco Owl Press operates in an environmentally friendly, socially just, and economically sound manner. So let's take a look. Hey, I found Cass. She is one of the co-owners here at Eco Owl Press. And I'm hoping that you can tell us all um, what makes a press a way that we can experience sustainability in Michigan. So looking at some of the environmental, social, and economic approaches that you guys take that maybe is a little bit different. Sure. So when it comes to the large format, it's a little bit more difficult than digital. Um, Any large format being like banners? Yes, uh, like this okay. large 63 inch roll, uh, the big banners, the retractable stands, anything um, outside of like a 12 by 18 like office printer. Um, okay. It's a little bit more difficult, quite a bit more difficult to find environmentally friendly options. Um, yeah, so that's kind of why I wanted to come because yeah. this stuff just yeah. looks like trash this, waiting to yes, happen a lot of times. But you guys are trying is. to get around that. We so are. how can we get around that? Yes, so offering alternative options. Unfortunately, we have to offer the bad stuff as well, but we really promote and try to use the, the better stuff as much as possible, hopefully to eventually get rid of like traditional vinyl banner. So this is what everyone's used to, which is plastic, vinyl, yeah. traditional banner that you go out, you put outside and it's waterproof, um, but it sits in the landfill forever will never break down. Um, so some people get creative and you can use it like in the bed of your garden, but it still eventually ends up in the landfill. Right. Um, Trash waiting to happen. Exactly. But there's an alternative. There is, and this is a new material, um, and it is made out of recycled PET plastic bottles. So it's PET but plastic. But it feels like a felt. It does feel like felt. Um, so it has a huh. different feel, which is the only difference, really. If you look at the way it prints, prints the same, um, but it's also UV, protected, it is mildew resistant, so it's waterproof, you can put grommets in it, you can sew the hem, you can do everything and you can do with the traditional banner. And it'll and last hang a really it outside. long time. Yes. And, and fact, when we're done with it? It can be, so you cut off the grommets, you throw it in the recycle bin, number one. You just, okay. even at home. Cool. Um, it lasts just as long as traditional vinyl. Um, it, in fact, we've discussed it could even hold color better because of the UV protectant that regular vinyl doesn't oh, have automatically. Um, also, because it's slightly that felt material, a little bit of air will go through it, so I think it'll last longer that way as well. Um, so we're trying to promote this as much as possible. And yes, it is a little bit more expensive than traditional vinyl. It's the nature of the beast. But if you design your banners, and we promote this even if you want to go with vinyl, where there's no dates on it and reuse it for as long as possible. The, Great. You know, on a business aspect, you know, I should try to sell you a new one every time, but no, if you just keep your <laughs> dates off of it or use a sticker with the dates or, or whatever, however you want to do it, you can use these for years. Um, but you guys do more than banners, so yes. you print stickers we do uh, and I think we've got some stickers coming off yep. the printer here and there's um, okay foam board yeah that looks like foam board it is not so it, tell me about this okay so this is actually this foam board which is okay horrible trash waiting yes. to happen. Right, so what we <laughs> promote and like to use is called Falcon board and it Falcon is board. actually more sturdy if you it's cardboard it is and it's wow. like a corrugated it's smooth and if you've ever messed with foam core, if you even touch it, it'll dent. This yeah. stuff is more structure. It'll hold that longer. The corners won't dent if you accidentally touch it. Um, and then we can use, we can mount your design directly to it, just like you would on foam core to put up on a display on an easel or to hang on the wall. And you can use it nice. over and over. And then this here is actually what's on the printer 
over there. Um, and instead of using adhesive vinyl, we use an adhesive paper material that's 100% recycled. It's wow. made out of coffee bag fibers. <laughs> it has water adhesive. And even the backer is a recyclable craft backer. So when you put your design on that and we mount it to this, this entire board is recyclable. Nice. Um, Not trash. Just right. waiting to become a new paper. Will last longer than foam core. And you can also recycle these big bears, you can. which we love to have out for yep. our stuff, um, but are most of the time trash waiting to happen. Yes. But we got a recyclable plastic, plastic film. And yep. of course the metal. Yep. Or could we just put a new banner in the frame? Yes. Really? We can. Oh. So this okay. is made out of recycled plastic bottles. So you're reusing cool. the plastic that's already there, and then you can continue to recycle it. This can be put in the recycle bin. And m traditionally, print shops won't want to replace the banner because you sell the stand, it takes a little bit more effort, but we really promote take care of your stand. Yeah. And then if you want to change out your design, you get a new branding or anything, we will take this out, put it in the recycle bin, and we'll replace it with a new graphic. It saves you money. You can use the stand until it's no longer usable before it gets thrown away. We do work with a lot of colleges and other departments that use a lot of these. And yeah. until they knew that you can replace the graphic, they have closet fulls of ones that you use for it's one just, event or yeah. just got outdated or you changed your logo and they just sit in the closet until they probably eventually get just thrown in a dumpster. So we so really promote it. So you guys are doing it. a lot in terms of to. being mindful with your environmental impact. Yeah. But I know, as you mentioned, you work with a lot of local businesses and organizations. Uh, so why is that your specialty? I mean, you could be printing a lot right. of stuff for anybody. We could. Um, well, we started local. We actually started out of our home. We live in South Bend. We raised our kids in South Bend. That monster printer over there, the large format one we talked about before, was in our basement. Um, my dad's self-employed. I was raised with that. But you've got to keep it in the community. The money stays where you live. When a rest local restaurant has us print their menus or stickers or their posters or anything like that, we then spend money by eating at that restaurant ourselves. And we promote it to our other customers when people nice. come from out of town. My family and friends hear about that new restaurant. And so you keep the money in the area. Um, even if you buy on Vistaprint or any other online place, they're not coming to your event. They're not coming to your restaurant. That's not as far as we know. <laughs> right. That money just leaves your community and never comes back. And so we need to kind of help each other out. And I, I love that we print primarily local. Um, so a range of local folks yeah. investing in your business, getting a high quality product yeah. that they isn't going to be trash. Right. Um, and in turn, you're investing in them, which I exactly think is right. fabulous. Exactly right. Um, so we're in the main printing room, but I know you've got even more stuff we do. Uh, to show off. All so right. let's so let me take put a look at down. the other fun printing room. All right. So you guys print a lot of of uh, cards, flyers, uh, bills, yep. invoices, um, menus, and even rack back cards. here, I'm seeing lots of little green labels. Yes. So tell me about why you're doing this. Well, we also buy all our paper local. This is from South Bend, so oh, we also fantastic. avoid, you know, the exhaust from, you know, shipping things, and we can also sure. get things quickly. Keeping the money in the community again. This is all local, um, but yes, we spend the extra money um, on recycled options when we can. So even just our basic bond paper, which is usually for invoices, what you use in your home printer, we get 100% recycled. Um, and so then, even when you send me a bill yeah. in bond paper, yes. I can be happy about it. Exactly, because I mean, if you really okay. think about it, that type of paper is, I think in most people's minds, almost free. It's kind of throwaway. So if you make a mistake, yeah. you throw it. You make a mistake, you throw it. So if you're already using recycled, and we use a lot of invoices, um, and then of course, then we can recycle it. We recycle everything here. We have a recycle bin in every room, um, so it just helps. And then even our envelopes, um, the specific brands that we try to of all the different sizes. Not only does the company, um, are they in, you know, environmentally friendly in their practices, there's also recycled content in those. And basic card stock for any business card or any you know, digital type item, even the glossy coated items, Futura, for example, this brand, that it's at least 20% recycled. And you know, they have the FSC certification. So we try to Great. as much as it's possible. And then up to 100% recycled card stock. Um, it is, you know, our, our profit margins are a lot less because we, we have to keep our prices pretty comparable. Um, not every Everyone can, uh, not everyone cares, unfortunately, about the eco-friendly part. Um, a lot of times budget is key, so mm -hmm. we try to keep our pricing to match around town, but we spend more on 
this type of product. It's just so important. So investing in a local business, but yeah. also investing in environmentally and socially responsible right. materials, mm -hmm. um, even in-house for really right. walking the talk. Yeah. Uh, but exactly. you're also doing a lot, um, as you said, investing in the community mm -hmm. and they're investing in you. So I'm wondering yeah. if we can learn a little bit more about a lot of these really cool flyers mm -hmm. and posters we're seeing right. over here. And what are we working on here and for who? Um, all kinds of cool stuff, actually. Um, these are actually like thank you cards and correspondence pieces for Pete for America. Oh, very um, nice. This is actually the um, new brochure, or the um, South Bend Roller Girls. Um, they have their opening bout this weekend. Oh boy, season opener brochure. Yep. This very is for nice. that and has, you know, basically all the, the, everybody on the team and so forth. We're co-sponsors. And we do a lot of that to, um, a lot of these organizations have, you know, just low to no print budget, so we'll help them out by doing in-kind sponsorships. To that way, they can actually get the word out about their event, and then we get our name out there as well. Um, so basically, for the cost of you know the print, we get to put our logo in front of everybody that shows up to this. So, or, Rich, as the co-owner of Eco Al Press, um, this is kind of your marketing budget in a way, but also your way of investing in the local community. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant approach. I love yeah, it. Um, I've, we've literally never spent any money on marketing ever. And it's all through in-kind sponsorships. I mean, being a print shop, we're sort of in a unique position that a lot of people could offer in-kind mm -hmm. stuff to be able to get their name in front of people at these events. So and yet, it's kind of just a, being here for a little while today, I've seen multiple different clients here. So yeah. somehow the word's getting out. Yeah, exactly. I, um, you know, when I first went out on my own, I'm like, I'm gonna spend every Wednesday doing marketing. Still have not spent a single Wednesday <laughs> doing marketing and then we're about to start year seven in April, so. Seven years, seven yeah. lucky years of yeah. taking a really balanced approach in terms of your investment in our local culture. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of cultural stuff happening here too and taking care of our environment. Thank you so much for that and operating a thriving business that's still going strong. So yeah. congratulations. It's fun too. And, uh, thanks for <laughs> showing me around. You're welcome. Thanks Cassidy. <laughs> Well, we hope that you enjoyed today's show. Krista, thank you so much for showing us the places that are really going forward as it relates to sustainability. Well, as you can see, these are, this is one of the ways that I'm trying to stay busy and active during this time. I'm trying to practice my cello a little bit more. Let us know what you're doing. And we also want to let you know that there are many organizations in our community that are finding creative ways to stay connected. The Music Village is offering virtual lessons. The Bartolo is also showing some things and also South Bend Civic Theater. So check out their website and also check out our website for some more information. That's all for this week. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay strong, and we'll see you next week. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.